Okay, here I'm going to discuss carbon dioxide enrichment. So first off, it's important to remember that carbon dioxide is in the air naturally. But we can see there's a lot of nitrogen is the highest percentage in the air that we're even breathing right now. Uh, carbon dioxide is in there, but at low levels. So enriching that uh, is particular, it can help plants grow uh, because of the increased amount of carbon, which they need to produce the sugars. So first off, let's just start with the basics. Well, what is CO2? Well, CO2 is short for carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is heavier than air, so it will sink. It's a non-flammable gas that occurs naturally in the atmosphere at levels of about 405 parts per million ppm. However, when the levels go below 200 parts per million, growth can stunt in plants as a result of the reduction in the photosynthetic process. This is why trying to maintain 405 parts per million or even greater can affect plant growth, but especially with growth um, can stunt if those levels go too low. Now, the importance of CO2 in a plant, well, carbon and the carbon dioxide is converted into sugar or glucose molecules that the plant produces. Uh, the carbon in organic matter originates as carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So that carbon dioxide is coming in the atmosphere plus water and light producing sugars and oxygen. Well, those sugars can be stored in the leaves. And where did that come from? That ultimately can compost down to form you know, organic matter. Well, that carbon source originally was carbon dioxide from the air. So plants are so good at assimilating that into a more stable compound here um, of the sugar uh, that can be used for a whole host of reasons. Carbon dioxide enrichment. Well, carbon dioxide provides carbon for the plant's biomass and sugar production. So that C6H12O6, that glucose, is also important for building components of the actual plant itself, in addition to those sugars that can be used for other purposes. The lack of carbon dioxide, so if we reduce carbon dioxide, can often be a limiting factor in this process. So enriching a greenhouse or a grow facility with carbon dioxide uh, has been around for many years because that is directly can impact plant growth, assuming water and light are all at sufficient levels. So photosynthetic rate, that's what PS is short for, uh, and light in different carbon dioxide levels. So adding extra carbon dioxide will be the most beneficial for plants that are receiving high light levels. So in, in the example here of low light levels, we could see higher low levels of carbon dioxide really don't make any difference. However, once you get by the low light levels and increase that light intensity, we could see the low level of carbon dioxide levels off at a much lower rate of photosynthesis. Higher level of carbon dioxide here will increase the photosynthetic rate here. So again, at those low light intensities can be a limiting factor. In this case, if you're adding CO2, there's going to be really no benefit to that. We see the same thing here where we have insufficient CO2, excessive CO2, but in a lower light and a higher light, and we see the same pattern um, here. Higher light levels with higher CO2 levels can result in an increased rate of photosynthesis, assuming water and nutrients are all above optimum. So CO2 enrichment can impact yield, adding or enriching an environment with CO2 to about 0.12% or 1,200 parts per million can increase plant growth by 30%. Note, research often debates the ideal CO2 level. Many will consider this to be too high. Uh, typically, levels we're talking about 700 to 1200 is kind of where you're seeing that increase in potential for yield. However, what is agreed upon is levels above 1500, to be about here on the graph, are not economically viable. Uh, that 700 to 1000 is the general range recommended. Some are running as high as 1200, depending on what controller unit they're using, to ensure they're always within that 7 to 1000 part per million level. But above 1500, as we can see here, we're kind of having that reduced growth, and it's simply you're wasting uh, money on carbon dioxide that's not beneficial to the plant. Now, dangerous levels of CO2, this is replying particularly to humans, there is carbon dioxide toxicity. However, those levels have to approach 5,000 parts per million uh, and above are not advised for people to be in. This can result in lightheadedness or worse um, due to lack of oxygen. We can see some of the symptoms here as that uh, increases. Um, in CO2 level. But as far as what we're trying to keep our plants at, 0.12% would be ideal. Um, and you can see that it takes even 1% here to start having any carbon dioxide toxicity um, for humans. So it's well below anything that would be of any concern. Uh, but when you start getting higher levels, that's where we start getting those uh, caution. The ideal temperature with CO2, so when enriching with carbon dioxide, the ideal temperature can increase from 85 degrees Fahrenheit to about 90. Uh, and above 90, then we'll start to see our decrease in the photosynthetic rate. So that increased carbon dioxide allows our to run our plants a little bit warmer, 
take advantage of potential heat that we may be trying to exhaust anyway um, and increase in plant production. The importance of ventilation in a grow space, so keep in mind ventilation is still important. CO2 depletion, especially in greenhouses or grow tent environments, can be quite common because of the confined space. The area should be sealed to help better regulate CO2 levels so you're not wasting CO2 um, out some vents or something. But it's important to keep in mind that ventilation is important uh, and, and which creates a delicate balance between venting out hot air, in this case in particular, uh, and exhausting out the precious CO2 that you've added. So here I've chosen to add the CO2 about midway through the grow tent and my exhaust port here is at the very top of the tent. Now, CO2 can increase plant metabolism, which is great because that can cause more rapid growth, increase nutrient consumption, filling the space quicker, and greater water usage. So keep in mind that when you are increasing with CO2, and here's my tubing right here, it can also cause that rapid growth, which is great, but that can cause increased nutrient consumption. So we want to be make sure we're feeding them appropriately, uh, filling the space quicker, so that could adjust your time if you're new to adding CO2, and greater water usage because the plants are simply growing faster. So keep in mind, when you change one thing, you want to be mindful of all the potential conditions you could be changing to keep your plants happy and efficient through the entire life cycle.